No. Uh, what you get is very happy bats. We're going to pop out. Yeah. You watch Hopefully this. Hopefully, we'll see you in a little while. Okay. We don't often think of domesticated animals as having a key role in the conservation of our British wildlife. But here at Berryhead National Nature Reserve in Tall Bay, the arrival of a herd of local Red Devon cattle could be crucial to the survival of one of our rarest British mammals. This organic herd has been introduced to the headland specifically to coincide with the first fledging of the extremely rare Greater Horseshoe Bat. Cows obviously produce dung, they're organic cows, so their dung is really good for lots of different insects, but particularly dung beetles, and the dung beetles are one of the favourite food of the greater horseshoe bats. Dung beetles are found on every continent except Antarctica, and there are 60 different types in the UK alone. Unluckily for them, we have 18 species of bats, almost a quarter of our mammals, and all of which are major pest predators, cleaning up many insects which would blight British fruit and vegetable crops. Some dung beetles only fly between cow pats at night, so if you want to get a close look at one in the daytime, there's only one place to go. Now I see movement in there. Things are floating to the surface. That's some of the dung beetles. I yeah. expected something much bigger than that. There's some that we get that are bigger, but they're not like the ones that you get in the uh, sort of African savanna with rolling massive balls of dung around. Yeah, that's sort of what I expected. But he's very beautiful, though, and he's quite strong. He's trying to burrow in between my fingers. So this is one of the Aphodius species, which is um, the most common one that we find here. And they spend the whole of their life cycle in the dung. These are particularly obviously fed on by the bats because they move around at night, so that's when the bats are out feeding. Because they're so tiny, presumably a bat's got to eat a lot of these in, in a night to get a decent meal. Yeah, so the bats are working really hard to feed and they'd be feeding on hundreds of these in a the night. But you, your cows are working fairly hard and the beetles are working fairly hard as well. The field where the cattle graze and the dung beetles breed sits right next to a massive limestone quarry, which was active up until the late 1960s. And it's in a cabin here that the greater horseshoe bats have set up home. Chris Smallbones is monitoring the bat population to see if the grazing initiative is effective. But it's only when darkness falls that both beetles and bats take to the air. So we're all poised and ready for action because when the bats start to fly, they're not going to fly for that long. So we have a cameraman down at the bottom of the quarry with an infrared camera and another infrared camera up here and a bat detector. So we're just waiting for bats now. It's starting to get really dark now and the bats are flying. So we're going to have to switch from using our normal camera to our infrared cameras. We have got a few just coming up now. Oh, just, yeah. Just coming up. Oh, brilliant. And is that the call? And that's the call on the bat detector. It's quite tweety, quite bird-like, isn't yeah, it? I've not it heard is. that before. Do we have an idea of what, what size the colony here is? Last year we had a count of 65 bats, and this year we had a count of 75 bats. But you can't really look at it as it's going to be an increase every year. So oh, got, ooh, oh, wow. Sorry, that was a good, really good raspberry, wasn't it? Really close as well. This raspberry noise is the sound detected when a bat eats a beetle, proof that they're getting food right on their doorstep. Obviously, there's a lot of insects out this season. We're lucky Thank tonight. Goodness. Yes, <laughs> definitely. In the end, it only took about 15 minutes for all the bats to leave the quarry and head out over Berry Head on the hunt for dung beetles. And how optimistic are you for the future of this colony? Oh, very optimistic. If we can build up our habitat here, then obviously that will have a good effect on our, our bat populations and hopefully we'll start seeing an increase. Modern intensive farm practices have resulted in a major decline in our insect population and that's had a knock-on effect on so much of our wildlife. But here at Berry Hedge you can really see how local initiatives can bring the insects back and how that can benefit seriously endangered animals like the greater horseshoe bat.